Hello everyone, welcome to Professional IES. So those who are watching me, please pause the video and see that these topics you have done or not. If you have not done these topics, please uh, stay with me. This session is going to be very fruitful session for the last three days because every three days we are doing it. That's why I'm saying that every three days, this is going to the very fruitful session for your preparation. And if you know all of these topics, please skip the video and do your preparation. That is not a problem at all. If you want mentorship, if you want UPSC or TSPSC group one group to mentorship, if you want to uh, join the current affair classes Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so you can just text or call to the particular number. So this is the only way of what advertising uh, the various modules uh, that we are having. I generally don't prefer to do any anything on the social media, though I have to, I should do it because that is where the youth, uh, that is where the people are there. But still, Everything uh, is uh, like uh, it depends on various criteria that financial constraint etc so and so forth So this is the only way I generally promote right so I guess that you have paused the video and you have seen that whether you know this topic or not Let us go ahead Okay, my speed will, will be a little bit faster because I re really feel that uh, current affairs discussion should be completed for a students uh, as early as possible because I don't want to drag it for hours and hours and try to give you conceptual or static knowledge which you anyhow will put a lot of effort already uh, in your classes. So let us study current affairs as current affairs only not more than that. Inflation let us talk about it. Retail inflation. Retail inflation is nothing but the, in, the price of uh, goods and commodities where actually we purchase from directly from what Kirana shop. This particular transaction whatever is happening if in this transaction if there is an increase is there in the prices we call it as retail inflation. Retail inflation is unchanged and remained at 5.09 percent in February. So we are talking from January to February then February to March we'll talk about. So when we see um, from January to February retail inflation remained what unchanged. But uh, uh, though retail inflation remain unchanged, we have seen within the inflation, you know that inflation is calculated on the basis of a price basket. In that particular basket, food commodities are there, non-food commodities are also there. Okay, this says that the price of the basket remained unchanged, but within the basket, the food prices have increased. It was around in Jan January 8.3%, whereas when it comes to February, it became what? 8.66%. 8.66% and uh, this in, and the food prices increase the increase in the food prices is seen because of there is an increase in the vegetable prices vegetable prices have increased with uh, for a seven month high in seven months there was no such increase in the vegetable prices but uh, whatever the in, uh, increase was there since the last seven months with regard to vegetable prices at this point of time it is highest when compared to what last seven months so vegetable prices increased by 30.25% very very important data in the examination they may ask you that retail inflation stood at as per the latest data 5.09% this is a minimum you should know about it okay for a uh, mains answer writing also inflation trends they will ask you this is what you have to write in the inflation trends okay right now question here is very important in the February month suppose let's suppose in the February month you are doing expenditure of 2000 rupees to buy the vegetable per month per month you are spending 2000 rupees to buy the vegetables and now it has become how much 30 percent means you are actually spending 2600 rupees from March onwards because vegetable prices increase just imagine a point here 600 rupees increase on vegetable let us also consider some other prices increase with regard to what LPG subsidy with regard to what uh, with regard to petroleum with regard to diesel etc with regard to any electronics prices increase let us suppose that in a month, uh, then uh, the overall expenditure with regard to our consumption increase, increase to 1000. 1000 you just, uh, for a normal uh, lower middle class family like us and upper middle class family like us, okay, that 1000 rupees extra expenditure per month does not matter. But if you consider it for 12 months, it will become 12,000. 12,000 is very huge amount, my dear students, because you can buy a pension policy, you can buy an insurance policy for your family also. So 12,000 is a very big thing. Whereas if you see the poor people, it is a huge burden. Remember this point here, right? So inflation measured by consumer price index accelerated from 9% in January. January, the inflation with regard to the complete box, um, uh, complete uh, basket, it was 9% increase to what? 9.2% for urban residents. Okay. For urban, overall remain unchanged. But for urban people, inflation from January to February increase. Remember this point. For us, for the people who are living in Hyderabad, Bangalore and cities, the rural India experience also increase. Rural India has 7.9% inflation in January and it, uh, and it came to what? 8.2% in February. So there is an increase in Overall, overall, there is no increase in retail inflation, but urban areas have seen increase of inflation, increase of price of goods and services from January to February. The same thing happened with the rural area also. Okay, overall retail inflation stayed higher in rural India 
unchanged from 5.34 percent recorded in January, while while urban inflation is slightly firm from 4.9 percent to 4.8 percent in February. Little bit of okay till it comes to March. Slowly, one percent change was there. These inflation subsided down. Core inflation, the inflation bit does not. In the price basket, if you remove food and fuel, whatever is left out items are there, that items, if we consider their prices and increase the prices of the particular basket, core inflation ex excludes what? Food and energy, nothing but fuel. Remain below 4%, which is very nice. It means what? Pen, pencil, rubber, sharpener, okay, clothing, etc. is well in control. Less than 4% of increase happened if we remove the food and fuel commodities from our basket. On a sequential basis, the consumer price index rose to 0.16% while the consumer food price index rose to 0.11%. Complete basket increase to 0.16%, only food basket increase to what? 0.11%. The next important topic we are having, Pradhan Mantri, Samajik Uthan and Rozgar Adharit Jan Kalyan, PM Suraj. Very, very important, launched yesterday only 13 March 2024. It's a national portal. Okay, under which the disadvantaged sections of societies like women, like divyang, like transgender, like very very poorest people, okay, STs, these are called as what disadvantaged sections of society will be given credit under this particular PM Surat scheme. Credit means loans will be given. Then Namaste scheme is also there. PM also distributed uh, yesterday while launching the scheme, he also distributed Ayushman health cards and PPE. PPE kits to Safai Mitras. Safai Mitras are nothing but those people who are actually cleaning the roads, those people who are actually uh, cleaning the drainages, sewage plants, those people are called as Safai Mitras. Government is saying that we have to look them with, with respect to what they are as our friends. Don't uh, look at them like low dignified. Make sure that they are a part of our society only and we have to respect what they are doing. And here, a person is imparted dignity. Under this scheme, we are talking about what mechanization of uh, sanitation whatever the sanitation works are being done in your locality in urban areas in rural areas wherever in the country that all have to be mechanized the human being should not do that kind of work which which makes him low dignified in a society so that is why under this particular scheme mechanization of sanitary works has been promoted mechanization means use machine for the cleaning for the sweeping for the gutter cleaning etc so and so forth so you know, under this particular Namaste scheme and is, when, when, when this particular scheme was launched, Ayushman health cards were anyhow given. National Action Plan for Mechanized Sanitation Ecosystem. Namaste. National Action Plan for Mechanized, MA means Mechanized Sanitation, ST means Sanitation Ecosystem. This initiative is nothing but to safeguard the health and safety of frontline workers. Means those who are uh, people belonging to municipalities and clean the roads, gutters, sewers, etc. So and so forth. We are trying to protect their health because you know that they are playing with a lot of germs, bacteria, etc. So and so forth. That is why PPE kits, they will wear it and they will do for some particular uh, point of time till the government makes the complete sanitation work mechanized. So mechanization of sanitation works has been promoted under this particular scheme. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has launched this scheme. Very, very, very important. Remember this point. So they are the, uh, the objective and the slogan is very simple. Manhole to machine hole means whatever the manholes are there, human being is not going to go inside that hole. It should be done by a machine. That is what is there in the Namaste scheme. Okay, Skynet 2.0, it was launched by China. China, remember this point, Skynet 2.0, it belongs to which one of the following countries? China. Nothing but under this particular scheme, lot of cameras, hundreds of cameras are sent by China to, uh, sur to surveillance their particular assets. Whatever the China has already got their satellites, they got their first module of their space station, lot of things China has already sent on the moon. So in order to protect their assets, in order to have a continuous surveillance on their asset, in order to see that uh, whether any threat to their assets or not, this Skynet 2.0 project has been launched by the China where lot hundreds of cameras will be sent and these cameras will continuously see their assets are in danger or not. That is what the program is all about, Skynet 2.0. Okay, lightweight, high performance security cam cameras and it are artificially empowered also. If they feel any threat, any threat is there with regard to uh, their asset destruction, then they will destroy that particular uh, any th um, threatful item or object. Okay, then Kailas temple, it was there in the news, a beautiful temple is there, you can see in the picture. Okay, this particular tem temple is a monolith, means carved from one single stone, one single mountain, okay, intricate uh, carvings are there, very very beautiful, 
okay designs are there showcasing scenes from hindu mythology like ramayana and mahabharata offering a visual narrative visual narrative means if you see the picture now you will get the story that is called as what visual narrative means with the eyes only you can understand the narration that this happened this happened this happened this is called as what visual narrative the kalash temple okay presenting on um, this this is there on the uh, mount kalash is a remarkable monolithic structure crafted after a single rock from a single rock okay it is built by rashtrakuta dynasty of 8th century 8th century is important rashtrakuta is important and the place is important and the uh, ramayana and mahabharata storytelling is important here okay this particular temple is dedicated to lord shiva because everything talked about kalash means lord shiva will come into picture remember this point okay india was a top importer of arms in the world obviously here we are having bangladesh we cannot trust them sri lanka already gone case china enemy pakistan enemy taliban already terrorist state so all the states all the neighboring countries of our country are what uh, having lot of uh, hostilities there that is the reason we have to import lot of arms so india became the top importer of arms that is was a news in the march 13 india was a top importer in the world in the period from 2019 to 2023 we have got lot of orders with regard to what defense imports okay our imports of uh, arms have gone by 4 point increase by 4.7 percent according to a swedish from stockholm international peace research institute called as cipri this particular institution will actually uh, bring out a report that uh, uh, with regard to which countries are in the race of what uh, building uh, the arms and ammunitions accumulating so they will bring that particular report they said that india is a top importer of arms and their arms import increased by 4.5 percent from 2013 to 2019 to 2023 at the same time arms import by european countries also increased by 94% only 4.7% we have increased and they have put us at the first point in the report whereas european countries arms in imports increased 100% in those year so there is nothing like uh, uh, like we should be criticized in any manner when they are having what 100% increase and our interim budget also 2024 has also given nearly 6.2 lakh crore was given for the defense ministry of which capital allocation means to buy the buy the aircrafts, buy the submarine for that purpose out, out of 6.2 lakh crore, 1.7 lakh crore are given for the capital acquisition of what? Uh, defense uh, arms, ammunition, aircrafts. This allocation, whatever is there in this present budget is 5.78% higher than the last year budget. So this increase is important. India seems to have come back to the top slot in arms imports after briefly ceding space to Saudi Arabia in the past because Saudi Arabia used to have a lot of imports of arms now uh, we have displaced Saudi Arabia and we got what number one position okay imports of Pakistan the fifth largest arms importer is Pakistan imports of Pakistan increased by 43 percent okay fine so with regard to arms arms exports USA exports USA America exports lot of them top position it occupies with regard to what exports of what arms okay then uh, uh, france emerged after usa actually russia was the second largest exporter of arms but russia has now been uh, obviously their uh, nato countries and other countries are not buying from russia because uh, it is having war with ukraine that's why russia have moved from the second place now france has become the second largest exporter after usa france has become the second largest exporter of what arms agni five based on multiple independently targetable reentry vehicle targetable reentry is nothing but we are here okay our agni 5 missile can go in the outer space and can reenter and this missile can shoot one two three four five different targets of different ranges we can hit one missile can go up and can what release five six missiles different ranges different uh, locations so that's why we say that multiple independently targetable all of the five will not go at one place independently they will as we fix the target they will go and hit reentry is nothing but it can go into the outside the space and come back it is developed by drdo under the mission divya divyastra remember this point the flight test was carried out from the dr apg abdul kalam island in odisha this is a missile testing center of india okay whereas space uh, launching station of our country is sri Harikota. the mirv technology means a single missile can carry multiple warheads and can release five six at a time it will ensure that a single missile can deploy multiple warheads at different location according to the government i have already told you this okay anti-drone system the defense ministry has signed a 200 crore rupees of deal 
to develop what entry drones if the drone is coming we have to somehow neutralize the door if a drone is coming from other countries enemy country we have to uh, what uh, we have to jam this radars we have to neutralize it we have to destroy it so if you wanted to build such kind of entry drone system because in future with the help of drones lot of uh, uh, casualties can be uh, done by the enemies that is the reason we have to first of all invest in what entry drone systems also we are very foresighted persons indians are very foresighted persons we know that what is going to happen we believe in artificial intelligence is going to be a game changer we know that with the help of drones anything can happen anytime so let us have a entry drone system by the help of that we can able to control the enemy drones for that purpose 200 rupees 200 crore rupees uh, of a tender is given to one technological uh, company called as big bang boon solutions okay they are going to give us a anti drone system which will be given to army and air force in future this is the largest contract signed by the ministry under the innovation for defense excellence basically this particular innovation for defense excellence is nothing but to promote the ecosystem of innovation technology in the defense products Okay, the company said the system, uh, this particular entry drone system uses passive radio frequency sensor technology to eliminate false alarms. If any false alarms are also there, it can detect the false alarms and can neutralize it. Okay, the system core sensor built around artificial intelligence and computer vision is also there and with the help of our, our algorithms enable precise identification, classification and location of drones. The company said that it's a sophisticated decision making matrix autonomously it will decide itself and uh, uh, jam the signals of the drone so that nobody can fly and make a casualty in our country bharat series number in future this already scheme was launched but many of the state governments have not yet implemented but this is how your number plate will look like if you adopt for bharat h series remember this one two bh means bharat instead of ap ts etc you will have what bh good thing about is this suppose i am in telangana hyderabad so my number plate is tg if i want to go to maharashtra yeah, with my vehicle then i have to get registered my vehicle there also they will give me a new number plate called as mh and it is very important fact that you have to understand that with the same uh, like you move from here to maharashtra you cannot drive the vehicle with the same number plate for more than 12 months within more than 12 months less than 12 months you have to get registered your vehicle in other state uh, rto and get the number plate from them this is one important point here remember this point so with the help of bharat bharat series actually everyone is using bh means what you don't have to actually go and register uh, your vehicle there that particular problem will be solved your money will be solved and when you move from this place to other place okay whatever the insurance you have taken the insurance may get uh, modified so when you are having bharat uh, series number plates are there you know across the country wherever you go the insurance will not be uh, the insurance uh, whatever the, uh, the benefits are there will not be changed this is another important area plus suppose you have taken an insurance but in a year you have not at all used the insurance you will get a bonus of it okay but if you change some insurance companies will have the clause that if you go from one state to another state okay if you don't claim then you will not get the bonus but when you are adopting the bharat series number plates you go any part of the country okay if you don't claim your uh, like uh, don't claim your insurance at all because no, never an accident happened then you will get the bonus these are the various benefits that you will get with regard to bharat series this program this particular series was launched in 2021 across the india remember this point all this i have already told you right tejas light combat i have already told you in my last class light combat is nothing but the aircraft will will uh, start early and go early will take the journey very fast that is called as light okay the light combat combat is nothing but it can launch offensive strikes defensive strikes that is called as what combat means we can release a uh, missile we can stop a missile from hitting us also that is why it called as combat abilities so light combat aircraft stages it is a indigenously supersonic supersonic is nothing but it can run it, it has a speed of five times the speed of sound five times a three to five times the speed of sound in between uh, whatever, whatever the speed is there that particular aircraft are called as hypersonic uh, uh, aircrafts or missiles okay it was uh, uh, first uh, started in the year 1984 this tejas was given uh, this particular uh, aircraft program was given uh, go ahead in the year 1984 uh, it was established by aeronautical development agency okay it is now developed by india's hindustan aeronautics limited so basically we wanted to replace all the mi-21 fighters 
MIG21 we have taken from other countries. We don't want this. We want to uh, replace all of this with what? Tejas. In 2003, the light combat aircraft program was named as Tejas. Tejas in Sanskrit translate to radiance. It, the name was given by Air uh, former uh, Prime Minister Atal Bihari ji. It is the second uh, supersonic fighter jet developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. The first uh, supersonic aircraft that we are having is HF24 Marut. Okay, Tejas is lightest. It is smallest multi-role supersonic uh, fighter aircraft in its category. Okay, and can have various types of. It can have air-to-air -air missile. Okay, it can have what air-to-surface missile and also standoff weaponry. It also can have that also. Right. The Tejas boats a maximum payload capacity of 4,000 kg of warhead arms, ammunition, missiles. It can take with it in a journey single pilot one person is enough single engine is there and maximum takeoff weight of 13,300 kg up to that it can take uh, the weight with it Tejas is a low cost aircraft with a simple design hence it is very attractive for many countries already we are having uh, countries like Singapore, Egypt, Sri Lanka, UAE, Turkmenistan all of them Malaysia they are expressed in their interest that we want to give we want Tejas please give us we have but we have not yet sold to them okay national Clean Air Program launched by government in the year 2019 aimed to reduce the uh, PM10 and PM2.5 level particulate matter 210 and particulate matter 2.5 levels by 20 to 30 percent by 2024 from the air. 2017 uh, by 2000, 2017 let us suppose in 100 molecule in 100 air molecule let us suppose in 100 air molecule PM10 and PM2.5 uh, is around 20, 20 molecules in 2017. So we have to reduce it to what 20 to 30 percent. That means you have to come down. So by 2024, 20, the out of 100 molecules, they it has to be only what 14 or 13 or 14 PM 10 PM 2.5 should be there. So that is our target. That target was later on revised, and now we want to decrease that PM particulate matter 10 particulate matter 2.5 by 40 percent in order to make our air ambient to inhale, ambient to respire. And with regard to pollution control, 15th, 15th Finance Commission has also given the grants. Okay, and every state will get grants on the basis of how they have done the performance with regard to what air quality management. Okay, the strategy for the clean air policy is also given under the Environment Ministry in 2019. What you have to do is a state have to go for plantation. That's what Telangana is also going in the form of Telangana ku Harita Haram. Mechanical sweeper should be there. Water sprinklers along the road to make the temperature good. Greening along the road. Landscaping and wall to wall paying of the roads. Phasing of older coal based power plants should be removed from the uh, state etc etc. Some important uh, um, activities are given to the state government by the environment ministry in 2019. With the help of this particular uh, activities they can reduce uh, the air uh, bad air quality and they can increase the ambient air. Measures connected to electric, electric vehicle etc. You can go through this. These are all measures okay, should be taken by the state government in order to make the air quality good one. Okay. Now we also have monuments losing their tag of national importance. So recently the Ministry of Culture has given a list of monuments around uh, I guess around uh, 20 monuments are there which are now uh, removed from the uh, uh, tag of uh, calling it, them as national importance. National importance is nothing but Archaeological Survey of India will try to protect and conserve its features. Okay, if something is broken, they will rebuild it, renovation, painting, etc. All that will be done if the project is, if the heritage structure is considered as what? National importance. But 20 uh, imp uh, uh, old heritage sites have now been removed from the national importance. You can go through the list, uh, all of this. I am happy that there is nothing from Andhra Pradesh. Sorry, I am happy that there is nothing from Telangana. Okay. All of this, I'll just move aside. All of these are not called as no national importance. Remember this. Okay, one liners, let us see. India's real GDP growth rate in financial year 2024 will be closer to 8% according to Chief Economic Advisor. The name is also important, V. Anantha Nageshwaran. He said that our financial year 2024 growth rate could be 8%. His name is also important. Okay. He said that industry and services are pulling the growth, but agriculture will be behind. Okay, because of delayed monsoons and monsoons are not proper also. That was the reasons given by him. Okay, global spirituality mahotsav held in Hyderabad. New Zealand, okay, 
they may ask you in the examination which one of the following countries are a part of phi i intelligence phi i intelligence so remember this point new zealand us canada uk australia these four countries and new zealand fifth country these five countries are having a coordinated intelligence system remember this point doordarshan has launched a series called as swaraj under this particular swaraj series focus on the sacrifices made by our freedom fighters will be showcased to all the children because doordarshan launching is important because doordarshan is the channel which comes in across the every part of our country remotest rural areas so we should uh, definitely as as a government minimum responsibility is that how our freedom fighters have actually fought the freedom and uh, what are their contribution etc so and so forth should be learned by each and every citizen of our country the upcoming generation that's why a swaraj uh, uh, program was launched under which the various contribution of the freedom fighters will be showcased and the children will learn from it and inspire and become like them and that is the, they are going to be the future uh, leaders of our country thank you for watching i'll come with more current affairs and do subscribe to the channel and share to all of your friends who are preparing for the examination thank you